I see they've built a new sign since I was here last. Twelve miles. That's about right. Hey, boy, our ranch used to be right over the hill there. I used to ride by here on my way to school. What happened, George? Throw a shoe. Open it up. I'll have you turn and look out the window. You better do as he says, folks. Keep it. Open it up. I have no money in there. I said open it up. All right, come on with me, Doc. Get going. I don't understand this. I can only think of one reason. You're not supposed to think. Schoolhouse, you can't miss. in the chuck wagon.
Anybody come by here a couple of minutes ago? Oh, I did. Get out of here. You're on private property. They were riding a horse. Looks just like that. As a matter of fact, it looks like he's been ridden pretty hard. Well, he's mine. I've been doing a little roping. Now clear out of here. I'm going to have a look in that chuck wagon. <laughs> What's this? Rogers. Well, let him go. Hiya, Mackenzie. What's this all about? He was snooping around here looking for somebody. He even wanted to search the chuck wagon. The bus was held up and one of the passengers was kidnapped. Well, why didn't you let him search the wagon? Your orders to me were to keep strangers out of here. Yes, that's right. I'm sorry about this, Rogers, but we've been having a lot of trouble losing our cattle lately. I hope you'll accept my apologies. Incidentally, where is the wagon? I'm afraid we scared off the team. I'll go pick them up. Never mind about that. We can take care of it. Anytime you want to cross my property, just let me know and you won't have any trouble. I'm sure sorry about this fellow, but orders are orders, you know. See, by the papers, you're heading for the Wild West show in Cheyenne. That's right. I thought I'd stop by the old hometown on the way. So far, I've really had a fine reception. <laughs> nice seeing you. So long. Steve. He was in the wagon. Well, listen, you dummy. Let's go find him. Dummy, huh? Where's the wagon? It's on down the road. Go get it. Something go wrong? Yeah. But I did just like you told me. Where's Luke? They grabbed him. Well, that's great. What if he talks? Luke won't talk. I took care of him just like I did the doc. Good. You're a smart boy, Steve. I like the way you do things. Now, how about that report? You don't think I'm dumb enough to bring it with me, do you? I did a job for you today, Mackenzie. It was a rough job. But I did it good. My price is still 10000 You get your money. I told you that before. But it's going to take us several days to round up the whole herd and drive it across the valley. I don't get a dime until I make delivery. I've got to work fast. Ten head have died on us already. I had to bury them this morning. That's your problem. My proposition still stands. I get the ten grand. You get the report. Get on behind. Pick up your horse. you have on? A genuine buffalo hide. Looks like a genuine coon hide to me. Coon skin? Go on, throw it down. You know, I can't understand about those dogs, Roy. I just got them yesterday and they're guaranteed to track down criminals. <laughs> See there, I told you it was coon skin. You can't fool an old hound dog. <laughs> Oh, 
Well, anyway, Roy, it sure is good to see you. Same here. I sort of figured on dropping down to Cheyenne a little later on and taking in the show. What did you get those... Bloodhounds? Yeah. I'm practicing to be a detective. Come here, I want to show you something. There's a fortune in the job, Roy. There's $5,000 reward, dead or alive. There's one for 10 in mail robbery. And there's another one for three. That's $18,000 worth of business right there. Well, that's more money than I make in the grocery business in 10 years. And incidentally, the grocery business isn't too good. Uh, speaking of this, did you hear about the bus holdup? No. The man got shot. No. You see, there is a future in this. Well, I'm supposed to meet the sages at the old schoolhouse. How about coming along? Well, good. I might as well. I haven't made a dime here all day. Uh, uh. Roy isn't here yet. There doesn't seem to be anybody around. Maybe they don't use this for a school anymore. It's Saturday. Hey, fellas! It's open! Oh, there's sure a lot of trust and souls around here. Not like the place I went to school. You're not kidding. As I remember, your school had bars on the window. Say, Daryl, this must be the teacher. Yeah. As I look around, it brings back memories of days gone by. It was in this very room sit and play and this is what the teacher would say a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z know your lessons well or you'll wear a dunce cap like a fool if you're a dunce don't mind the bell the teacher will keep you after school till you learn a b c d e f g h i j k l m n o p l m n o p q r s t u v w x y z Little Don Gomez, he didn't do so well, though he was so smart. He knew how to read, and he knew how to spell, but it broke his heart. When the teacher said, recite the alphabet, just how he'd sound, I'll never forget. A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. No offense to Lexian Lagora de Tonto Yate Tonto. If you're a dunce, don't mind the bell. The teacher will keep you after school. Till you learn A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z Was in the fourth grade 13 years To get ahead I'd never bother To get promoted he had fears I'd only catch up with my poor father So learn your A, B, C, D, E, F, G H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T U, V, W, X, Y, Z Hey, fellas. Hey, fellas. Hey, fellas. Oh, you better get out of here. Go on, get it. As I was saying, I should have you all arrested. Illegal entry. Disturbing the peace. Damage to public property. The window, that is. Sparrow Biffle, I'm ashamed of you. Who belongs to those two big hounds that just left here? Well? They're mine. 
I'm sorry. Say, Ruth, I'm not doing anything this afternoon. And if you'd like me to, I'll stay after school with you. Are you kidding? Oh, Ruth, we were just having fun. Me and Roy Rogers used to go to school here. Yeah, we were just passing through on our way to Cheyenne, and I wanted to stop by and say howdy to the teacher. Howdy. Come on, fellas. We better clean up this mess. Happened to Miss Paxton. Oh, she was dismissed from duty three years ago. Dismissed? Well, she was the best teacher a boy ever had. She taught us how to shoot, all about plants and animals. Yes, I know. But when one of her own didn't turn out so well, the board was forced to let her go. They said if she couldn't raise her own stepson decently, she was a poor teacher. What'd the boy do? Oh, he got into wrong company, always into some kind of trouble. Here's their picture together. It must have been a rough on her. It was. She devoted her entire life to this school. Then to have it all taken away from her and disgraced, just about broke her heart. Where is she now? Oh, she's still out in the same little place on the range. She doesn't want to see anyone, won't talk to anyone. Her whole life's wrapped up in that boy. She still believes in him. What do you believe? Well, I believe in Miss Paxton. Sure would like to see her. Well, that's possible. But why don't you stick around this afternoon? She comes over here very often on Saturdays to help me correct examination papers. I think she likes to believe she's back teaching school. Why, well, howdy, Miss Ruth. Hello, Sheriff. Glad to see you, Roy. Same here, Sheriff. The boys told me you were in town when they reported this bus holdup. Say, Miss Ruth, I'm looking for Dolly Paxton. She's generally here on Saturdays. Yes, I expect her later this afternoon. Well, later is too late. What seems to be the trouble? Well, that son of hers was seen headed for their place. I thought if I could get Dolly Paxton, well, she might be able to save us shooting him down. Shooting him down? What'd he do? He's pretty well known here, Roy, and the passengers on that bus identified him as being in a holdup. They shot and killed Dr. Fredericks. Dr. Fredericks? Say, Roy, you and your boys better come along and help me smoke them out. I'll need every man I can get. All right, Sheriff. Maybe you'd better wait here for Miss Paxton. She won't come here if she's heard about this. Hello, Steve. I thought I heard someone in here. I was out weeding the garden. I'm in a hurry, Ma. If anybody asks, you didn't see me. Steve, tell me. Is something the matter? Are you in trouble again? I sure am. This time they pray me good. They're out to get me, Ma. It's about a holdup. down the ravine. Don't try to take your horse with you, or they'll see you. I'll keep them busy. You don't think I'll bail out of here and leave you to cover me? You've got to leave, Steve, now. Wait a minute, Ma. There's only a dozen men out there. If you wait, there'll be every deputy in the county, and it'll be too late. Now, get I out. won't leave you here alone. You'll be shot. I won't be shot, Steve, I promise you. As long as they think you're with me, I can keep them busy. Now, go on. Come on out, Steve. We're going to have to smoke them out. Maybe you and your boys better circle the hill. Wait a minute. Somebody's coming out. Don't shoot, fellas. It's Miss Paxton. One shot up in the air. What does she mean? Well, 
That shot means she's going to stand by Steve. Wait a minute, Sheriff. You can't shoot Dolly. She hasn't done anything. I'm going down there. Roy, you can't. That boy of hers is a killer. He'll shoot you armed or not. Roy, she's right. You don't know that kid. I know it. But I do know Dolly Paxton. Well, I'm going with you. You stay with the sheriff. Roy! Dolly! Miss Paxton! Don't shoot! He isn't armed! Don't come any closer! I don't want to shoot, but I will if I have to. I don't think you will. And I don't think you'd let Steve shoot an unarmed man either. Don't you remember me? I used to go to your school, Roy Rogers. Hey, is that any way to treat one of your old students? I remember what a good shot you always were, Miss Paxton. But I'm still coming in to talk to you. Hi, Miss Paxton. Where is he? I don't know what you mean. I don't know you. I never saw you before. Get out. That's no way to talk to a kid you taught how to read and write. Where's Steve? I'll take care of her, Roy. Search the place. Where is he, Dolly? You're mistaken. I'm all alone here. I only tried to defend myself when your brave men started firing on my home from the hill. Come on now, Dolly. Steve was here. You covered for him, didn't you? I did, sir. Very well. He's beyond your reach. Why did you do it? Can't you guess? You knew we wanted him, didn't you? Did I? Well, harboring a fugitive and aiding his escape, now that's pretty serious. I'm afraid I'll have to place you under arrest. Very well, sir. If the law considers what I did was wrong, I'm ready to pay for it. Wonder whose horse that is. It's mine. I thought I told you to lay low for a while. What do you want now? Some help. The sheriff put me in the corner, but Ma covered for me while I lambed out. They picked her up. They've got her in jail. I'm sorry, but what can I do about it? Well, that's easy. They'll set bail tomorrow. Send one of your boys over to pick her up. You slightly out of your mind. Everybody in town knows who works for me, and if I send one of my boys in to bail Dolly out, it looks like you'll work for me, too. Don't I? Not while the whole countryside's looking for you. Think I can make you change your mind, Mac? Yeah? This is Frederick's report. It's loaded with dynamite. I'll read it to you. Gentlemen, confidential report from Dr. George Frederick's county veterinarian to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Subject, evidence of hoof and mouth disease existing at McKenzie Ranch in Sunrock County. As county veterinarian... I must recommend that government authorities at once destroy and bury all infected Mackenzie cattle in order to prevent spread of this disease to other herds. We know all that. If he had reported it, there wouldn't have been any sense in holding up the bus. As you know, if this discovery should leak out, panic would be caused among the ranchers of this county. Some of them might try to quickly and secretly move their stock to market. And if diseased cattle are moved, they infect any area they cross spreading the disease. What are you driving at? Suppose this report gets to the sheriff's office. He's going to say to himself, Mackenzie figures to drive those sick doggies to some small packer who will maybe can the stuff and ship it overseas. And he's going to be right, Mac. Tell that stooge of yours if he draws that gun, he'll never live through it. Lay off, Sanders. 
Don't you think you're getting a little upset about nothing? You know that when Dolly comes to trial, there won't be a jury in the town that'll convict her. I know that she's the only one that ever believed it. I'm not going to let her break her heart in that rotten jail if I can help her. So the old dame spends a couple of days in jail. It won't hurt her. Stop it, you fool. I don't like that kind of talk about Dolly. Steve, I admire your loyalty. As I've told you before, I'm a little short of cash and will be until I get rid of the cattle. But if you come over to the ranch later, I'll advance you part of the money. Okay. Or if you like, I'll give it to her. I'll give it to Mom myself. There's something I want to tell her. But I'll need some help from you. Anything you say. Tomorrow's Sunday, and Ma will be in church. She hasn't missed it in years. I want two of your men to cover for me while I talk to her. All right. I'll have a couple of my boys meet you in Mountain Lane at 10 in the morning. I'll be there. Dolly, I think it's terrible. You have to go to jail on account of something Steve did. It was my own choice. I suppose it was your own choice they took the school away from you, too. The school. That couldn't be helped, and you know it. I know it could be helped. If you just admit Steve isn't the boy you think he is. Ruth, I'm going to tell you something that nobody in this town knows. Steve's father was a gambler. Years ago, he killed a man in self-defense. They sent him to the penitentiary where he died. Steve's mother passed away when he was very young, so I took the boy and raised him as my own. Unfortunately, everybody in the town knew who his father was, and they never let him forget it. The poor kid never had a chance. I can understand your sacrifice, Dolly, but the damage is done now. Why should you ruin your life, too? What they didn't know was that Steve's father was my brother. Before he died, he made me promise to care for the boy and protect him. Well, you've kept that promise, Dolly. You've done everything anyone could do for a boy. Now you've got to go a step further. You've got to help the authorities find Steve, Dolly. If he's innocent, he'll have a chance to prove it. It's too late. He's crossed the border, and no one will ever find him. And anyway, whether he's right or wrong... I know, Dolly. Oh, boy. Sheriff, would you please take Dolly in? We're a little late, and I have to go in the back way. Sure, Ruth. Take care of your bail and then some. Where'd you get this, son? Never mind. We've got plenty more coming, too. Don't look at me like that, Ma. I know what you're thinking. Forget it. 
You just saw what happened. I saw you getting very handy with a gun. But, Ma, they tried to kill me. Yes, I know. There's only one thing I can do. Clear out of the country. If I stay around here, they'll get me sure. Here, Ma. You take the buggy. Get back into town and pay off the sheriff. Meet me two weeks from today in Juarez. The Seminole Hotel. Now remember, the Seminole Hotel. It's Rogers. Here, yeah, you take the team. I'll be all right. Goodbye, Ma. Remember, two weeks. Goodbye, Steve. Yeah! Gee, Dolly, I thought for... That I was leaving? Where's Steve? Steve, I knew, is gone. he will never come back. You take this, Roy. Steve gave it to me. I'm afraid of it. I don't want that kind of money. I'm sorry things turned out this way. Wait here, Dolly. The boys will pick you up. Can't be far from here. Did you see Dolly? Ruth took her back to town. She was pretty badly broken up. We better fan out and search the valley. We've only got a couple hours before sundown. I'm going to stay with you, Roy. Good. We'll head over to the H.T. Ranch. On the way, I want to check all the water holes and drawers. Steve may be injured. like a grave. Yeah, it sure does. Oh, do it, uncover it. Might be somebody we know. Get back, fellas. Get back. Hey. Hey, what's that, salt? Ash! Quicklime. Well, what would quicklime be doing out here? I don't know, but it's usually used to destroy something. Look. A cow's hoof. Well, I wonder where the rest of the cow is. I imagine it's attached to the hoof. Oh, well, at least it's no one we know. Why would anybody want to give a dead cow a funeral way out here? I don't get it. Neither do I. Right now. Oh! Well, golly, Roy, look at there. Looks kind of sick. Better tie up the dogs. They might scare him. Come on, Frank. Come on, Alice. This little fellow seems to have a high fever. Well, if that's his mulberry there, he's probably starved to death now. There isn't any other place around here he can find a meal like he wants. Seems to be weak in the legs. Can't hardly stand up. But the looks of that fresh grave, if it is his mother... He wouldn't have time to be weak from starvation. Well, we better take him back with us and see if we can fix him up. Yeah, might as well. Be a waste of time looking for anybody around here. Besides, it'll be getting dark pretty quick. I'll go get the horses. Roy. You don't take a hint very well, do you, Rogers? See you back on McKenzie property. Hope you got permission. Sorry, but we didn't have time. We're on a manhunt. To me like you're on a calf hunt. I'd say you're doing a little rustling. Do you mean to insinuate by any chance that we're cattle thieves? That's what it looks like to me. Now get out of here. Oh, oh. Get out. No, just a minute. Nobody's going to hit Ash. my... I'm taking you to the sheriff. It's all right with me. You better take that cap along to the vet. He's pretty sick. Looks all right to me. Besides, what difference does it make to you? It ain't yours. He's got a pretty high fever and weak legs. He has. 
Well, in that case, we'd better put him out of his misery. Did you find him? No, we didn't. We gave up when he got dark. Hey, what happened to you? Well, he's run into a little trouble. What took you so long? Picked up a sick calf. Couldn't travel very fast with him. He's outside there. Hello, Molly. Give me the vet at Harneyville. She's ringing it. Yeah? Oh. Oh, all right. Yep. Yeah. Sure. Look, look, I'm in a hurry now. Yeah. Okay, Molly. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll see you Saturday night. Uh, Molly says the doc's out on a call and they don't know when he'll be back. Well, I guess we better do something for him ourselves. He's a pretty sick little fellow. Roy, why don't you get in touch with Dolly? She knows more about animals than anyone in this county. But she's in jail. Hey, use this for Dolly's bail. And get her here as fast as you can. She'll understand. Say, where'd you get all that? It's a secret. But don't worry, it doesn't belong to me. You boys go with Ruth. And after you get Dolly out of jail, you might as well turn in. There isn't anything else you can do this evening. And hurry up. Boy, I got a key for Dr. Frederick's place. He has all the medicine and stuff. So why not take the cap over there? Well, Ruth. Yeah? Bring Dolly to Dr. Frederick's place. Sure, I. Well, I want to get out of these muddy clothes. Let's go. This little fellow's really sick. Look, Sparrow, his temperature's almost high enough to bust a thermometer. Hello, Roy. Well, hello, Miss Paxton. Thanks for bailing me out. I don't mind taking that money for this sort of thing. Hello, fellow. What's the matter? Look. Mm. You know quite a lot about this sort of thing, Roy. What do you think? It's got me stumped. There seems to be something wrong with his legs. Sounds like a lot of lung congestion. Might be pneumonia. Pneumonia? Quite possible. I'm afraid I'm a little rusty. Better check up on this. Ruth, will you hand me that veterinary manual, please? Certainly. I had a run-in with that guy, Rogers. He's got one of the sick cats, and he's taking it into town. From the looks of you, you didn't stop him either, did you? Well, there was two of them. Well, there's only one thing left to do now. Get every head we can together and begin moving tonight. That'll give us a chance to start through the valley by dawn. Well, there's still a lot of strays out there. Forget them. There's too much risk. We've got to work against time. The minute Rogers discovers what's wrong with that calf, we're out of business. Don't worry about that if I were you, Mackenzie. Steve... I thought you... After all, the only horse doctor in town is dead, remember? Hoof and mouth disease isn't easily diagnosed. Where's Bob and Ed? Why, well, I don't know. I th I'll tell you where they are. They're lying out there in the road, dead. There must be some mistake. I didn't tell them to... You made the only mistake, Mackenzie. Now, I want that money. All of it. And I want it right now. Okay, Steve... You win. Get it. It's in my coat. Well, what's next, Steve? As long as Mackenzie seems to be out of the deal, I'll settle for his share. Okay, by me. We need all the help we can get anyway. How do things stand? There won't be much sleep for us tonight. We've got to get that herd moving. 
Okay, let's go. Pneumonia. Symptoms all check. High fever, lung congestion, eyes, legs. Ruth, see if you can find some penicillin. Okay, Dolly. Well, in pneumonia cases, penicillin generally brings the fever down, but what are we going to do about these legs? Well, uh, here's another disease with symptoms like this, but the leg... Oh, Roy. Hapless fever. Hapless fever? Hoof and mouth disease. Hoof and mouth disease? Oh, no. But I don't see anything wrong with his mouth. Sometimes all the symptoms may not appear for 18 days or longer. That cow we found buried in quicklime today. This could be her calf. Buried in quicklime? That's what they do with cows that die with hoof and mouth disease. That keeps it from spreading. I read in the newspapers that they recently had to destroy thousands in Mexico. Or in this case, it could be to keep anyone from knowing about it. That cow we found belonged to Mackenzie. And Mackenzie's starting to move his cattle. Doesn't that strike you as being kind of funny this time of year? Suppose he discovered hoof and mouth disease in his herd. Suppose he kills and buries all the infected cattle in quicklime. Then ships the rest to market, hoping to collect before the disease is discovered. Why, well, that'd be terrible, Roy. That might start an epidemic that'd ruin every rancher in the county. That's why his foreman tried to run us off of the place. And when he couldn't do that, he tried to kill his calf. Roy? They gotta drive that herd clear across Sunset Valley to get to the loading pens. Cattle with hoof and mouth disease infect every area they cross. If Mackenzie drives those animals to the railroad, that means that every hard working rancher and sheepman in the valley stands to be wiped out. The whole county will be quarantined. Unless we can stop the herd and get them inoculated. Ruth, get in touch with the sheriff and have him round up a posse and meet us in Sunset Valley. Sparrow, you and I'll head on out that way and try to hold him back until the sheriff arrives. I think we can make it by daylight. We'll see you later, Dolly. How's it going? Okay. Got them all together now. We ought to reach the north end of the valley about dawn, cross over the railroad by noon, right on schedule. Okay, guys, get them moving. This one can't walk. Believe her, we ain't got time to bother with the sick ones. Let's go. to stop them. Every one of Mackenzie's men are with them. Hey, Steve! There's only two of them. No use trying to talk to them. Oh, <laughs> 
They're probably over those hills. I'll try to hold these fellas off. I can't, Roy. I can't. You can't. Why not? Is it broke? I don't think so. I'm sure bleeding. <laughs> See if I can stop the bleed. All right, fellas, let's go. to bring him to. I got an old debt to pay. One time, this guy hit me on... Hey, hey, hey! Oh, oh, oh! No, let me! Give me! Oh, let me! Oh, let me have that. I gotta do it all over again.
in. You won't need that gun. I've talked to him, Roy. He says he's willing to give himself up. Yeah, I'll do what Ma says. I should have done it long ago. <laughs> This is what happens to kids who think they can fight the world alone. Won't listen to their parents or those that love them. I'm going to miss him, Roy. This is the way I'll always remember him. That noise. Why aren't you in there with the children? Oh, they're not my responsibility anymore. Not your responsibility? No, they're yours. You're still a school marm. I was only holding the job temporarily. Well, Ruth, what about you? Don't worry about me. I have a job waiting for me in another town. Where is it? Cheyenne. Goodbye, Miss Paxton. Be sure and take good care of those kids. <laughs> 